When we're talking about fighting, self-defense, sparring, you have a bunch of different options when we talk about stances. But you might not have as many stances available as you think. What's going on guys? It's Rob from Combat Self-Defense and in today's video we're going to talk about three common fighting stances, how to use them, and what the ultimate best fighting stance is. So when we're talking about choosing your stance, there's three things you need to consider. Number one, the ability to attack. Obviously if your stance doesn't make it easy for you to go from standing neutral to throwing out your strikes, you don't want to be doing that stance. Number two, the ability to defend. If you're standing in such a way that you can't defend yourself from oncoming strikes, then once again, that's one you don't want to do. Number three, the ability to move. So your stance can offer you the ability to attack. Maybe it offers you some defense, but you gotta remember, fighting is a study of motion. You need to be able to move. So if your stance has you planted in the ground so low that it takes you forever to move from side to side, forward and back, then it's not a useful stance. So a stance needs to marry those three concepts. Attack, defend, move. So we've already thrown out a bunch of stances. We know standing in this deep tiger stance here is probably not where we want to fight from. So I've narrowed our stances down to three. Now these three stances have various mutations based on if you want to strike, if you want to grapple, whatever. There's a bunch of mutations. But for our sake, we're going to stick to three. Our three stances are going to be the kickboxing stance, the karate stance, and the neutral stance. So the kickboxing stance is the stance we use predominantly in these videos and in my classes. You're going to take your right foot, step slightly behind you just like that. I'm going about heel to toe, straight back, resting on the ball of my foot. This is if you're a right-handed person, you want your right-handed shot, your power shot, to be able to rotate with maximum force. If you're a lefty, like I am, then you're going to go left foot behind. You want to put your power hand behind you because that's the one that's able to generate the most force. From there, I'm going to take my elbows, dig them in to my ribs here. I don't want to have my elbows flare out because that leaves my entire core, that nice six pack that I don't have, that leaves that open to get struck. So I want to take my elbows, protect myself right there. Then my hands are going to stay about eyebrow level. I don't want to protect my chin. I always want to protect my entire head and especially my brain. So my hands come up here to protect me. From there I can decide, do I want to stay in close with this guard here? Do I want to reach slightly farther out? If my hands are close here like this, obviously I have a tighter guard, it's harder for them to slip in. But if they do, I don't have a lot of options to defend myself. With one hand slightly out, I can parry and check and throw strikes faster from this position. So, it doesn't really matter. Do you want to hang out here? Do you want to hang out here? Play with what's comfortable. You'll notice I'm staying on the ball of my foot. That's because if I get flat footed, I'm immobile. Again, let's talk about our three concepts. Attacking, defending, moving. If I'm hanging out flat footed here, and I'm flat footed here, I basically have to march anywhere I want to get to, which is fine. But to get anywhere fast, I want to use my feet like a spring. So I use the ball of my foot to spring off back and forth like that, or to the side. So don't hang out flat footed. I like to tell my students we move like deer. If you watch deer walking, they don't stomp down on the ground. They feel it to make sure it's safe and then put the weight down. So we want to step with the ball of our foot, make sure the ground is safe from underneath us. You can think of our kickboxing stance as our 50-50 stance. Like I said, I can throw my hands just about as easily as I can throw my legs. And I'm pretty mobile. I can move forward, backwards, side to side, and in the angles pretty easily. It takes me about as much effort to move forward as it does back, as much to move sideways, side to side, and angles. It's about the same either way. And defense-wise, my right hand defends me as much as my left hand. My right leg defends me as much as my left leg. So the reason the kickboxing stance is our default stance in these classes is because it's the easiest one to move from. So to help explain our stances, we're going to talk about weapons training. Think about it like this. The kickboxing stance is similar to how you would fight using two sticks. Each stick is as capable of attacking your opponent as it is defending you from your opponent. And of course, you can attack and defend at the same time. So when you're in your kickboxing stance, think that you're holding two sticks or a sword and a shield. One to attack, one to defend. Moving on, we have the karate stance, aka the side stance, aka the horse stance. So with the kickboxing stance, I was standing here like this, my left hand could strike you just as much as my right hand, right? I had about equal defense right there. With the karate stance, rather than being split down the middle like I am with the kickboxing stance, I'm going to take my rear foot and put it on the same plane as my lead foot. I go from here facing 50-50 forward, take my rear foot, put it on the same plane. So now I'm heavily favoring the lead hand and particularly the lead foot. So the way it works, I start here standing normal, widen my feet just to about shoulder level, and then I bend the knees. All of these stances depend on you having bent knees, but especially this one, you want to treat your knees like springs. So I'm here bouncing. I'm light on my feet, able to move forward and back. 
just like with every other stance. To move forward, I need to push off the rear foot. To move backwards, I need to push off the lead foot. My hands need to be doing something. They can't just be here down by my side because then I'm totally open to get struck. You will see some high level Taekwondo players fighting like that. That's high level Taekwondo. We're not talking about them. You want to defend yourself. So I have a couple options. The standard one is put your hands up like you do when you're kickboxing. One hand up, guarding out, one hand here by your face. But this hand's gonna be too slow to defend you. If someone's trying to hit you, they've already hit you by the time this is engaged. Look at how bladed I am here. This hand is my entire defense. At this point, this isn't doing much. So I don't necessarily wanna be standing like this. What I can do is go from a forward defense to a vertical defense, because my ribs are what's most exposed here. They can't really hit my face, but they're gonna hit my body. So I'm gonna raise this hand and I'm gonna lower this one. So I'm now here defending from the side. My right hand has a lot more reach than it did in my kickboxing stance. So even someone who's vertically challenged like me can now reach at a much farther range. This hand right here is staying close and fluid to my ribs. You'll see a lot of karate fighters fight with very flowy hands. Why? Because this is real distracting and from this bladed stance I can move in and strike very quickly and deceptively. So the karate stance is a very deceptive stance. So you want to end up somewhat playing here, but allow your arms to move. So the instinct is to think, well, you have forward and back momentum just fine, but how do you move side to side easily? I move to the side. But what I'm doing is just like with every other movement, I'm pushing off the lead foot and moving my rear foot in the direction I want to go to. Boom. Or I'm pushing off and moving this way. It takes slightly longer than moving like this, but not by much. So you want to practice pivoting and changing direction. You can also work on switching your stance. Because of the way this stance works, you don't really have a dominant, non-dominant side. You're gonna have a preferred side, for sure, but whereas with here, one hand's gonna have to really work your defense, the other one's gonna prefer offense, here, your hands and, and feet can work just about equally. And if you have a weak side, let's say my ribs just crack every time I get hit, then I can fight from here and take them completely out of the equation. So, my karate stance is here, in essentially a modified horse stance. I'm very bouncy, forward and back, slightly less so, horizontally. You might be saying, my rear hand and rear leg are now taking so long to get to my opponent that I basically don't have those weapons available to me. And you're kind of right, but you're kind of wrong. Because if you learn how to use that lead hand and that lead foot to set up your opponent, you can distract them with a quick back fist and set up that reverse punch right away. So you can come there and land that quickly, or you can come here, land that roundhouse quickly. It's all about how you use this lead side to set up the rear side. If you just go for a clean cross punch like that, obviously they're gonna see it coming, but that's true of any stance. You have to remember that this stance is maximized for point sparring. In point sparring, if your opponent taps you, that's a point to them. So you wanna give them as few options to hit you as possible. So I blade my stance off like this. Now, the only thing they can actually hit is my face, which obviously I'm gonna defend. Or they can try and sneak past my guard and hit me in the ribs. If I narrow my body like this, I'm protecting my body with the rear hand, my head's protected up here, so I'm pretty well defended, and I'm pretty offensive from here. The other drawback to this stance is because of how much weight I'm splitting between my two legs, it takes me a long time to defend from leg kicks. If my opponent starts trying to chop away at my legs, I have to shift my weight over to check them, or I can try and drop into a horse stance to just flex that muscle into the kick. But either way, my leg is super exposed. It's not a deal breaker, but you need to be aware that you're exposed to those leg kicks. And, because we're not purely a striking channel, I'm not set up to grapple from here. If I want to grab onto my opponent and throw him judo style, I have to go from this wide stance to a much more narrow one. And the same is true if he wants to go for a single leg. Because of how wide my stance is like this, he can take this leg out pretty quickly. So, this stance is great for offensive striking, but not so much for grappling. Now the karate stance is like fencing with a foil. I'm not an expert at fencing, but I understand the concept. Stab your opponent and don't let him stab you. You're trying to dart in, land your attack, and get out as quickly as possible. And in our case, we get to assume we have a dagger in our rear hand. The trick to this stance is just to stay out of your opponent's range and engage only when the moment is just right. So if the kickboxing stance was 50-50 in all areas, you can think about the karate stance as being 70-30 attack defense. I'm preferring the ability to attack as opposed to defend. My defense in a karate stance is really more evasion. Now let's talk about the neutral stance. How do you do it and what is it? This is it. Neutral stance is the way you normally stand. Again, this is a self-defense channel, not a combat sports channel. So we're not always ready to engage from this kickboxing stance. And we're almost never ready to engage from here. If we ever have to defend ourselves, we're probably gonna be standing like normal or sitting down in a chair. 
So it's important for you to learn how to move from this stance. I gotta tell you the truth. Evolution kind of screwed us here. Because with my feet planted just underneath my shoulders like this, I'm very easy to knock over. So here, we're kind of at our most vulnerable, which is why in most of our fighting stances, we're separating our legs, widening our surface area. So if I had to describe the neutral stance in one word, it would be overwhelming. You can defend, attack, and move about equal amounts. But because every single option is available to you, and every single weakness is available to you, you don't necessarily want to hang out in this stance. Which again is why we go from here to here. We practice in this stance because the goal from here is to end up here or end up here. So there is value in learning how to defend yourself from this stance, but only insofar as it services you moving into a different stance. You should be training in the neutral stance from day one of your martial arts training, but you should be doing it a limited amount. What you should be doing is practicing going from this stance to your fighting stance as quickly as possible. And that's gonna come from repetition. So you should have certain drills, certain techniques, certain practices that start out in the neutral stance and essentially force you to go from here to either here or here as quickly as possible. Finally, we have our neutral stance, which I like to think of as our assassin's ninja stance. Here you're keeping your weapon hidden until the absolute last moment and then striking out with extreme prejudice. Relaxed explosiveness and expert timing are the key to mastering this stance. That being said, you'll notice when I talk, I like keeping my hands in front of me, not down to my sides. That's an important thing if we're talking about defending ourselves from the neutral stance. Because from here, I have the ability to high block, to check, to start throwing strikes pretty quickly. But with my hands down by my side, I don't really have the ability to defend myself anymore. Because by the time that strike's on its way and I raise my hand to defend myself, it's already too late. So from your neutral stance, yes, you want to be as natural as possible, but you want to keep your hands engaged. That can be here, that can be here. You'll notice I'm not folding my arms into each other. I'm resting them here like this, ready to attack if I need to. So, neutral stance, keep your hands engaged. Don't tuck them behind you. Don't put them in your pockets. Keep them where you can defend yourself. All right, so we talked about the pros and cons of our three primary stances. Now let's figure out which is the one true stance. Which is the stance we need to maximize our self-defense, our fighting, and our sparring? Do we want the 50-50 of the kickboxing stance? Do we want the quick explosive evasiveness of the karate stance? Or do we want the practicality of the neutral stance? The answer is you want all three. You should be practicing all three of those stances because martial arts is a study of movement. We're not statues. So we don't hang out here forever. We don't only train from here and we don't defend ourselves at all from here. We end up moving between those three stances all day long. So you want to practice moving and transitioning between them as often as possible. Like I said, you want to have drills where you start from the neutral stance and then have to defend from a sucker punch. Maybe that means moving into the kickboxing stance. Maybe that means dropping and throwing a side kick. And if I'm in the kickboxing stance right here and I want to throw a side kick, then I have to transition into that bladed stance. And if I'm in the karate stance and I'm sparring with someone who just loves taking out my legs, then I transition so I don't give them that big open target. So don't get married to any one stance. Like I said, Every single stance has its pros and its cons, and those weaknesses can be exploited by an intelligent opponent. But if you think, I'm learning to move, I need to learn how to move from the neutral stance into the kickboxing stance, into the karate stance, and then back again, you're gonna be that much more prepared for whatever our training is gonna throw at us. You need to look at martial arts as more than just a dogma. It needs to be fluid. You need to learn to move. So play with the neutral stance, play with the kickboxing stance, play with the karate stance. All three of them have value, it's up to you to decide when and where to use them. So I hope you guys learned something. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment right there or send me an email at the attached email in the description. As always, I want to thank you guys for the hard work and thank you for the hard work yet to be done. Oops.